All right, welcome back everybody. Well, we're gonna change things up this week. We'll go acoustic and we're gonna do a beautiful ballad uh, song by the Beatles, well, really John Lennon, um, off the Beatles' White Album in 1968. Um, it's just a single six string um, and a voice. <laughs> That's pretty much it. We'll go through the great chord shapes that are make up this song and uh, the beautiful finger picking style, which can be challenging uh, if you haven't done this before, but we'll I'll break down exactly what that sort of finger style is and uh, we'll go from there. So listen, if you like this kind of thing and you haven't done so already, I invite you to click subscribe and ring the bell. Bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Um, all my videos have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I appreciate that. There's thanks, which is just like a, a button below throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page where I've got chord charts and tabs for all the songs I do on YouTube like this one. And all the links are in the description and check it out. Okay, so this is John um, alone on his... Six string, six string, probably uh, his Gibson J160E capo at the second fret. Standard tuning, but you just capo at the second fret. And uh, by the way, yes, this is a 12 string guitar, but I only have six strings on it. I just strung it up like a six string, so that's all that's going on here. That's not, I don't have all 12 strings going on here, just like a regular old six. Okay. I do have one piece of gear that I'm employing um, in here, which is trying to get into the zone of what you hear on the record, because I think he double tracks his guitar. I think he records it twice, playing with himself, I believe. Maybe. Um, but I've got this great uh, Keeley 30 millisecond um, uh, delay pedal that I'll put the d uh, details in the description below. It's super cool. You can do sort of a, a double track sound uh, or artificial double tracking sound using this among other things that it's got um, and you can run it in stereo and it's very cool but it's it's down below and I'll be using one of the settings on this you'll hear it in the sort of right and the left um, okay so let's first talk about the finger picking that's being used here so John learned this as the story goes the Beatles went to India in early 68 on a spiritual retreat when they were following uh, the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and they went to Rishikesh in India for, I don't know, several weeks, maybe a couple months. And while they were there, they were there with a lot of, you know, other folks that were traveling with them, um, including other sort of popular music figures like Mike Love from the Beach Boys was part of that trip and Donovan, um, who was a big sort of folk singer, uh, folk pop singer in the 60s and uh, out of Great Britain. And um, anyway, he learned this finger picking style from Donovan. I don't know if Donovan just told, taught it to John or taught it to the rest of them or whatever. But as the story goes, Donovan taught him this finger style. So there's an independent thumb pattern that you're using and then uh, which is consistent. And then there's a different pattern that you're you know, finger is going to use to complement what your thumb is doing. Okay. I'll talk about the chords in just a minute, but let me just talk about this, this finger style. So the thumb pattern, it, it takes care of the fifth, fourth, and the sixth string. So these, well, these, you know, sixth, fifth, and fourth string, that's what your thumb is going to live on. And the third, second, and the first strings are what your finger is going to work. Okay, so let's take, um, for example, um, a C-shaped chord here, um, which technically is in the pitch of D because we're capoed up, but let's just, I'm going to call it the chord shape. So it's a C, and I'm going to put this, this note on top, this third fret note with my finger. So my left hand is going to stay in that position and the only thing that's going to do um, is it's going to you're going to take your ring finger from the from the root note and you're going to alternate it from there 
and the sixth string, same fret. So you're going to go back and forth. And that's the opening chord of the song. That's the only thing that moves on that. Now what your right hand is doing while that's happening, let's just break down the thumb. The thumb is going to go in a consistent pattern and it's going to go five, four, six, four. So you can see how that's working with this with the left hand where the note's changing. No matter what chord you're playing on this song, your thumb is always doing that. Which is great. It has a little sort of bouncy rhythm to it. You know? And then, like I said, no matter what chord you're doing, chords in the song is you're going to be doing that with your thumb. Now your finger to complement that is going to be doing this. Well, let me figure it out first. I use my index and my middle finger. That's playing in complement to this. So you put it together and you get beautiful, right? So if this is new to you, <laughs> if this is new to you, I would encourage you to just stay on that chord, just that chord, just do that one chord and um, work on your right hand rhythm with that chord alone. Because what will eventually happen is this will become muscle memory where you're not really thinking about it. Um, and it'll just run on its own and it allows you to you know, if you do need to focus more, you're focusing on your left hand chord changes. And this is just running automatic and it takes care of itself. Um, and the only way I know to really get skilled up on this is just to start painfully slow and just work your way up over time. And it will take several days. It will take, it could take several weeks depending on how much time you devote to it. But one thing that you'll notice, um, after you do this for a while and then you put the guitar down and you go do other things, you know, especially overnight, you come back the next day and you do it again, you're going to notice a remarkable change, a remarkable, remarkable, uh, how much uh, more it becomes easier for you every time you're coming back to it because your brain is actually making physical new neuron, neural connections. Um, you know, overnight while you sleep, um, when you keep telling it to learn this, or you'll be amazed. The next time you pick it up, you'll notice that you'll be able to go faster with it and just build it up over time. Okay, enough of that. So. It's going to take time if you're new. But either way, whether this is new or not, let's talk about the left hand now and the chords and the chord shapes. I'm going to have them pop up over my shoulder. Um, and I'm just going to run through. There's basically three parts to the song. There's three sort of chord um, sections to the song. Okay, so, so here's the first one. one of those notes there. So the chord shapes are C shaped, 
again with this note on top, A minor with that note on top, E minor with that note on top, ending with a G. Okay. The one thing I'll say about when you come to the G um, is be mindful, again, of your right thumb or your picking hand thumb when you get down to that. Because uh, you find yourself, a lot of people want to, when they go to the G, they want to all of a sudden pick the root note first. And it's funny, you actually change into the chord from the E minor to the G, but you don't actually hit that G just based on where you are with your thumb pattern. You don't hit that G until sort of the second strum or whatever of, of that G chord. So here's what I mean. Did you notice that? So and then here you would change, you know, but you don't go to the G. Like that. Anyway, just small nuance. Um, all right, so that's section one. C, <clears throat> A minor, E minor, G. Next section is C, A minor, now we're going to do a G minor 7 shape with the, with the note on top, two frets up. Again, exactly the same pattern. Whoops. So that note on the top, it gets put on the top uh, the second time you come around to it. So. Now you're going to go to an A dominant 7 shape. And then we're going to do the same shape that we did down here when we, were, when we did that G minor 7 shape. It's an, it, We're just going to do it at the first fret, like an F minor 7 shape. But here we are adding on the note on the top in the beginning. And we're going to move it up one fret. So... All of that part again. It's hard to keep all those notes down. There you go, that was better. All right, so C, A minor, G minor seven. A shape. And that's that shape again, but you have your note on top. And you go up one fret there. And then you close it out with uh, section one. Now the third section, or the third variation to the chords, I guess is the bridge, let's call it. Um, we're gonna transition to a B minor shape now. And notice we're again moving our, you can either lay it all the way across so you don't have to move it, but I find myself doing a regular B minor and I sort of just move my index finger to the second fret on the sixth string. Again, exact same thumb pattern. Five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four with your thumb. C. A minor. Actually, that might be an A minor seven. Someone will correct me, but I play it with A minor seven. Someone's gonna say, that's wrong. Um, all right, and then the last um, note here, or the last little chord sequence, is the only time you're gonna vary on your thumb picking, and you're, you're varying with the finger part, okay? We're not gonna pick the first string. We're just gonna do the uh, second string and the third string, and this is over an E minor seven shape. 
okay? But we're not going to hit that first string. It's going to go... See what I did there? So it's an E minor 7. I'm just walking this chromatically down. Over that same E minor chord. And if your ears are perking up, recognizing that, because it's in a million places in Beatles songs, this is... All the lonely people Where do they all come from? although it's down on E minor, but it's the same thing. It's a great vehicle. It shows up a bunch of places. Yesterday uses a version of that. Right. Um, and there's a bunch more. I'll probably do a lesson on all the places that the Beatles use that chord phrase. It's kind of cool. All right. Um, so that's the third uh, set of chords. So again, it's B minor, C, A minor 7, pull that down. Now our E minor, and we're not going to hit our first string. And then back to the beginning. come around so sing so right you come right back to your C major seven shape right so that end Okay, well that was Julia by John Lennon off the Beatles White Album in 1968. Beautiful ballad written by John, uh, dedicated to his mother who died when he was 17 in a car crash. And um, there you go. So I hope you learned something new today. If that finger picking thing is new to you, stick with it. It took me a long, long, long time to get even close to even saying I might be able to have some level of mastery on it. <laughs> Clearly, I don't have it 100%. I'm close. But uh, stick with it. So, all right. Well, if you haven't done so already and you like this kind of thing, click subscribe, ring the bell. The bell will let you know I, when I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do, let me know what that is too. All right? So, all right. Well, until next week, take care, everybody. <laughs>